killed a fucking doctor, too. Have you had your eyes checked? The Killer's Game stars Dave Bautista as Joe Flood, a veteran assassin who has been experiencing frequent headaches, hindering his ability to perform his job. He's looking into getting out of the game and building a future with his girlfriend, a performative dancer named Maisie, played by Sofia Butella, but upon being diagnosed with creutzfeldt jakob disease, a fatal neurodegenerative disorder with no cure, Flood opts to go out on his own terms, not wanting Maisie to watch him slowly die. So he does the only logical thing and puts a con contract out on himself, but mere seconds before the contract goes live, he gets a call from his doctor revealing that his charts got mixed up with another patient's, and he actually doesn't have CJD. The problem is, the contract can't be cancelled, and the bounty is high enough to attract every mad dog killer in the European continent. Helmed by day shift director J.J. Perry, the killer's game is the kind of action movie we almost never get anymore a mid-budget, no-frills actioner that nurses no delusions about what it is. No overblown CGI slugfests, no attempts at shoehorning in some kind of pseudo-intellectual messaging, no nose-up-its-own-ass director more focused on subverting expectations than delivering a halfway decent product, and no overpaid actors stroking their galacticized egos at the expense of the film's quality. Just an hour and 44 minutes of pure escapism. A beef castle protagonist, a knockout love interest, a bloodthirsty psychopath of an antagonist, and an army of money-hungry shitbags standing between the hero and his ultimate goal. Right on. In short, this is the kind of movie that had it come out in the 1980s would have been made by the Cannon Group and starring the likes of Chuck Norris. It's time. <laughs> or Charles Bronson. Do you believe in Jesus? Well, you're gonna need him. Or Sylvester Stallone. The disease. And I'm the cure. While the plot may taste like reheated leftovers, that doesn't stop J.J. Perry from making the most with the material he's working with. The killer's game trots its familiar ground with enough style and flair that's often lost on whichever recent film school graduate is being plucked up for the latest filmic flop Avi Arad happens to be ghost directing this week. The action is serviceable enough with tight framing and quick cunning when necessary, wide framing and long takes otherwise, and a glorious mixture of both practical and CGI gore. While pedestrian viewers may write it off as a John Wick clone, they'd only be half correct in that observation. Yes, the killer's game exists in a heightened reality similar to the John Wick series. And both movies involve a super assassin craving a simpler life only to find themselves hunted down by an army of killers. But while John Wick plays it straight, the killer's game leans into the absurdity. Hard mainly through the colorful assortment of assassins that Flood is forced to contend with. In the grand scheme of the movie's universe, Dave Bautista's Joe Flood and his handler, Ben Kingsley's Zv, are perhaps the most normal people amongst the ensemble of killers, with Flood being the weathered assassin looking for a way out, and Zvi being the handler, the mentor, really one voice of reason in Joe's life prior to his courtship with Love. While that Love, played by the always beautiful Sophia Butella, is your standard plot device girlfriend, I can at least buy the connection between Flood and Maisie, something that can't be said for a lot of love interests in other movies. There is some real chemistry between Batista and Butella, enough to make you hope that they'll both make it to the end together. And then there's the people out for Joe's head, starting with Palm Clementif's Antoinette, whom our intrepid hero meets with to put the contract on himself. Unfortunately, she's not really given much spotlight and mostly spends her screen time sitting behind a desk calling the shots against Joe. Sure, it's nice to see her play a character with some personality after playing the silent henchwoman in Mission Impossible 7, but apart from one bit that lasts all of a minute, we don't get to see her show off her physical prowess, which is a damn shame. Picking up the slack, we have Daniel Bernhard of Bloodsport 2 and The Matrix Reloaded fame as Antoinette's head bodyguard Max, who commands a team of mercenaries out to kill Flood in the film's third act. If you're expecting him to show off some of that Bloodsport 2 skill, just rewatch Bloodsport 2 because Max is all guns. Also joining the fray is Terry Crews as the ultra suave love doll, a character that wouldn't be out of place in a 70s black exploitation movie. He's here to shoot guns, chew the scenery, and get paid, and God bless him for it. 
Lee Hoon plays a Korean named Goyang who commands a team of martial artists that make the mistake of gunning for Joe early on in the movie, which only gives the five of them enough time to show off some fancy moves before being decimated. Marco Zoror of Undisputed 3 and John Wick 4 fame plays Spaniard dancer assassin Botas for a couple of scenes to dance and kill simultaneously, and he looks damn good doing it. Perhaps my favorite among the killers is in the form of the McKenzie brothers Rory and Angus, played respectively by WWE wrestler Drew McIntyre, and the greatest action star that nobody talks about, Scott Adkins. Wild, ruthless, and vulgar, these two wouldn't be out of place in an early Guy Ritchie movie, and it's always a treat to see Scott Adkins not relegated to disposable goon number 5 billion and 76. The Killer's Game may not be the most intelligent or groundbreaking piece of cinema in recent memory, but it is one of the more entertaining actioners to hit the theater in a long-ass while, and you'd be remiss not to see it.